Okay, first, I should introduce myself. My name sure. is Hector Rodriguez. I'm also known as Optic Hacks. I spent a week of thrills with the founder of Optic Gaming. No, easy, no, easy, I'm... easy, easy, easy. I, I literally just said easy. He is the self-proclaimed creative genius behind one of the biggest brands in esports. I am an entertainerpreneur. Entertainer first, and then preneur second. Despite his humorous outlook, I wanted a peek behind the green wall. The nicest asshole you'll ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> to discover what the life of an internet superstar is really like. I've always been rich, I just didn't have the money until later on in my life. For an action-packed week. Turtle Wax wants to do a video with you where you go out and drive exotics, and he's like, pick it, Lambos, Ferraris, yeah. whatever you want. In the passenger seat of Hector Rodriguez. We started our journey at Hector's home in Frisco, Texas. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, you're trying to emasculate me already, that's fine. What are you eating over there? <laughs> that's it, I'm just eating stodge. What? Stodge, like thick. Stodge. This sure. is an absolute insane connection. So this is a, a 2019 Ford Raptor. Like you just don't get cars this big in the UK really. <laughs> you, you probably look like a butthole, right? Right around one of these. Yeah, so people just you think it? you got a small dick. That's the... Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's pretty you, common. You can have you both. You know, obviously the wagon is the, the, the one that I bought from, from Nature. Yeah. The worst, most expensive car that I've ever had, for <laughs> sure. Uh, funny story, this thing was sat right here and we were doing a photo shoot and I sat on top of it and I, and I made a dent on it. And it was a photo shoot for Turtle Wax, right? Um, the Turtle Wax and I go way back, right? It's, it's, we, we've been partners for a long time. Uh, and yeah, so this is this has been my like my my favorite car that I've driven so far. Yeah. Now this is the wife's daily. The reason that she got this one after wanting this one is because she said she was getting too much attention driving this one. <laughs> so she got herself this yeah, one to be more <laughs> low-key. What ended up happening though, right? When I got the truck, originally she was like, ew. But then all of a sudden, as soon as the dogs started to love it, like that's what, like it became her car. Well, the dog's car. Like that's literally for the dogs. And you can tell right now by on, on the windows. See this? You know what that is? That's Henry Slobber. Right, my Great Dane Mastiff, who weighs 196 pounds, stands six feet three, like his dad, six foot handsome, right? But again, the beauty of it is like we're we're fully stocked like forever on on just cleaning materials. You and Turtle Wax go way back, don't way you? Way back, so, like, yeah. Back to 2016, they sponsored Optic. It was this huge thing, and you were an ambassador, I guess, to them. So, are you hoping to do more stuff in the future with them? I would love to, right? Like the the fact that we haven't done anything together in the last two years, and then I got a phone call to say, hey, there's this cool opportunity to go drive exotics in a beautiful place with a beautiful backdrop. You know, for Turtle Wax, a partner that I believe in and that I've worked with in the past. Like it was a no brainer for me. You know, like go have fun and promote a brand that you already promote anyway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's time. You're so comfortable though. <laughs> What's your first impression? I've obviously seen like videos and stuff of it, but it's pretty cool to see it in person though. All right, now like you grab you grab these uh, these leaves on the side, yeah, and just like gently, but just enough, rub it between your 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 yeah. There you go. Oh wow, yeah. Is that like the oil that comes off? Yeah. <laughs> Smell that? It looks so good. Yeah, how much does something like this cost to set up and run? We got a million buck, million plus in this property. Wow. Out here. People thought I was crazy, but I'm like, hey, I get to partner with Pine Park now, so <laughs> fuck you guys, you know. <laughs> Amen so, to that. Yeah, yeah, bro, that's good. That's nice right. So I, I grew up in the 80s in Ciudad Juarez. This is pre-internet, pre-anything that you know today. Uh, and my childhood was fun. And I've always had this personality where I'm very forward, but I'm also like very conscious of, of, uh, of like my surroundings. Uh, I always like to make people laugh. But my childhood was like amazing, man. Like I, I, I don't think that I could trade it for the world. And when you don't have anything, you don't miss it. It never really touched or struck a nerve with me until like I was older and I saw people like with fresh new pair of shoes. And I remember like being like eight or nine years old, a size, nine, call it a seven to an eight. My dad being a 10 and a half, I would borrow his shoes to have variety. And I think that, that that moment in time, I knew that at some point or another, I was going to be 
going back to that memory and saying, I'm gonna get the shoes that I want today. And this applies to just absolutely everything, not just necessarily shoes. Not, not cheap either, the, the cheapest ones, like, no, the, the I, don't look, I don't look at that. The steak. Mike, Mike, I don't look <laughs> at yeah, that. Yeah, because it's not your card. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when your parents said, we're gonna move to America? Yep. Do you remember, what, like, what did that feel like? It was a traumatizing event, actually, because, uh, and I didn't know it was gonna traumatize me until later. Uh, one day I'm playing soccer in front of my grandma's house. I'm playing soccer with my cousins and then I see my dad at the corner of my eye. So I turn to see him and he's coming up this hill. And I'm like, I'm like, it's not time for him to come home from work. So I run to my dad and I see that he's got blood like, or like dry blood that he was trying to wipe off coming down the other side of his head. And I thought to myself, I'm like, I'm like, oh, what happened? He said, oh, I bumped my head in an air conditioning unit at, at, at work. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Didn't think anything of it. Two weeks later, uh, my mom says that we're moving to Chicago where she has family. And later in my life, I found out that the reason that we moved in the blood, uh, my dad used to work security for the Mexican lotto or the, the city lotto. So he was a, a money collector. He got, he got carjacked, gone to his head, butt to the, to the temple. Uh, and you know, whatever happened, happened. But uh, apparently got hairy, right? Like he said that they took him to a cemetery and like, it, you know, Mexico in the 80s is Mexico in the, in the 80s. Anyway, long story. Uh, but yeah, we moved because my mom felt that that was not gonna be a place where she wanted to raise her kids. We, we moved into an apartment in Wheeling, Illinois. It was a condo. Uh, it was a two bedroom condo. Obviously I'm sleeping on the couch, right? Like it wasn't a, 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 a super well off upbringing, but it was better than Juarez, yeah. right? And it was also like a very happy moment for me because I got to go to live with a cousin of mine that was my age, my cousin Jose, but they didn't play video games. It wasn't until I started hanging out with my friends that I started sort of being introduced to PlayStation 1, the first game that I ever played. I think it was SOCOM, and it was the first time that I ever played multiplayer. And I couldn't in my brain understand what my friend was trying to explain to me. And he's like, no, this guy can be like across the street. I'm like, how the fuck do you know that guy? He's like, no, 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 he could be. Yeah. I'm like, but he's not. So you, how do you know? Like, who, who are they? It didn't make sense, right? And like, I'm like, oh, I like this video game stuff, right? But at the time I was like learning how to paint graffiti. I was learning how to be better at basketball, soccer, like all these different things. And, and video games were just like never, they were always there, but they were never really a big part of me. So that was like the earliest gaming memory that I have. Checkered flag, inside lining. I don't even know where to put it. I think I might wear it as a tie. Tail Wax is inviting us here. We're gonna be heading out in a Ferrari 488. What up, bro? What's up, partner? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to my car. This is my car for the day. No one can tell you otherwise. This is mine. We're about to go to lunch, Hector. On the way to lunch, we're gonna follow 40 Lamborghini Countaches. When you're on like a rally like this, do you feel like you've kind of like made it? Yes and no. So I, I feel like I made it from an influencer standpoint. Uh, I would feel if I made it, if I was part of the actual ownership group of, of those yeah. Lambos. But no, I, I, I'm just excited to be here. I'm, I'm drinking water, dude, like this. Are you actually drinking water? Yeah, well, it's, for, it's you what you drink, actually. Pissy water, what you drink, because you're, no you're, you're, you're like five years old. <laughs> I think that one of the biggest responsibilities that we have as people with large following yeah. is that any single time that a cool opportunity arises, you have to take advantage of it because there are millions of people who would kill to be in the position that you're in. There we go. We are off to the races, baby. Nice. <laughs> I'm a in the past lane. I'm be top of the world that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> It was August 14th, 2009. Uh, my wife's pregnant. I'm at a job that is, isn't fulfilling. And the day, I remember the day that, that my manager and I just had had enough about each other. I remember walking out and I said, uh, you know what, I'm gonna do this gaming thing full time. I'm gonna see what, what, it, what this looks like, what this fan base looks like if I apply eight hours, 10 hours, 12, 13 hours a day. If I focus on this thing, let's see what it turns into. And for a year, I did it and I would tell Jude, I'm like, hey, this is gonna work out. Like, we are gonna get paid. And yeah. then she's like, cool, just show me the money. 
Olivia's born, she goes back to work, I'm taking care of Olivia while, you know, continues to make my videos while she's down. The first check that I get from a shit is 16 cents. Immediately when I open and I see it, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, it's one of those internet scams that I've been warned about. I'm like, how can a 29 year old allow himself to fall for this thing? Next check, it was $16,000. And then after that, it gradually just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, I think at the height of, of when Optic was doing what we were doing, we were doing close to like, as a network, close to like 65 million views uh, a month. So now we're in the backyard. As a kid, I would have loved to have had something like this. Uh, I grew up in a very humble home. I, I, I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. As much as I didn't have toys or as much as I didn't have anything, I had a lot of cousins and a lot of friends. Although it was a very humble, you know, sort of background, it did shape me to the man that I am today, right? It makes me appreciate the things that I didn't have then. The same, same thing with my job, right? Like I grew up in corporate America. Having that nine to five and knowing what it's like to have to punch in a code on a phone to go take a piss, like really always terrifies me so much yeah. that I do not take anything for granted ever. Obviously, my life is better now that I have money, but I lived without it. I know what it's like to live without it. I know how to make ends meet. We've done it before without any, any money at all, living paycheck to paycheck during the mortgage bubble, mortgage crisis, the housing market crashing. Like we, we were both in that industry and we had to give up both of our cars. We had to foreclose on our first home, which was a townhouse. So we've, we've hit rock bottom before and we've been fine because we have family and we have each other. When you think of Hector, like what, what are some of the qualities you think of? Sexy. <clears throat> <laughs> He's a wild card. Um, you know, one day he's just busy and he's always happy and just, yeah. just busy and crazy. He's always around. I don't around. know how to describe him. Am I allowed to say what I always say you are? Yeah. The yeah. nicest asshole you'll ever meet. <laughs> Look at these bombers, man, right? The finesse that it takes to roll the perfect little bomber. Look at this fatty right here. You want some? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, look, wait till the rotation, Mikey. Well, yeah, well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like wine. When I first started drinking wine, every, everything tasted the same. But then, little by little, you sort of start to understand like the different flavor pro profiles as you should with this peanut butter souffle. It tastes like cake batter almost. Definitely tastes like smoother than the other one. Yeah. That's the yeah. other fun part about launching a, 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 a cannabis brand is that you obviously have to do your own research and development. <laughs> right, that's so fun because you actually and it's your get work to, as well, you know. Yeah, it's work. Yeah. Right. So it's important, yeah. I've, I've always said it. My my dream since I started doing gaming was to continue to make my hobbies jobbies. That way, I can continue to do the things that I love without feeling guilty yeah. of the fact that I might not be working, you know, or that my time could be better used, you know, yeah. somewhere else. I have two choices for you. Yeah. English breakfast. Yeah. American breakfast. What's the difference? Just pick. I don't know. You decide. English. You're the influencer. Or you should have the English one. Yeah. Okay. See, I just influenced you. That's how good I am. <laughs> Welcome to the garage, Mahal. And the reason that I got this garage was because I, I told myself one day that I was gonna own a boat, a bass boat. I love bass fishing. I'm gonna show you guys the upstairs now, which is probably my favorite part. Beautiful. You can't say bootyful as I'm walking up the <laughs> stairs and you're staring I at didn't my say ass. Beautiful. I said beautiful. Yeah. So. This is my man cave away from home. One thing everyone likes to see inside the fridge, so. Boom. There's something for everyone. You want Mexican Coke? There's Mexican Coke in there with real sugar. Trulies. We have the Trulies for the millennials. We have uh, the Coronas and the Heinekens for the hip hop heads out there in the 90s. And of course, obviously, the H2O. <laughs> you, are so, you are such a man. <laughs> my London folk out there. <laughs> So what are your plans for this place next? Like, is it gonna, are you gonna keep this space? Are you gonna go to a bigger space? Like, what's what's next for the Garage Mahal? That's yeah, it. look, be, because of what's happened in my life and the way it's happened, right? Like, I, I didn't come from money early on and I never imagined that I'd be in the position that I'm in. I never thought that video games would lead me to where it's at. Like, I, I, I had hope that it would yeah. and I saw the vision that it could. What it took to get there was the intangible that obviously nobody can control. Uh, so since then, I've, I, I just don't make plans. I know that I want to be in Texas. I know, I know that I want to be in Frisco, whether it's in the house that I live now, whether it's in this garage, or whether we buy property and make a bigger world. Welcome to the Hex Quarters. Imagine walking into someone's brain through their earlobe. 
it's a packed house. The players compete, practice, and also the content creators, right? They create their content, they stream from here. At any one time, you can have a total of like six people uh, doing their job. The chill area, also seven the years trophies. of hard work. All the trophies. Which is, uh, which is your favorite? My favorite is the first one, right here. 2011 Orlando. Wow. This is where we were. This is the first uh, championship that Optic won. It's, uh, it's, it's, I love it. It's my favorite. Uh, the majority of these are all Call of Duty championships. We have over 35 uh, championships. And to give you an idea, right, there are millions and millions of dollars at stake when they compete, right? There's a $3 million tournament uh, right here. There's a trophy, but there was always like a $3 million tournament. 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, 250, 350. You sort of start gathering like the amount of money that can be made if you are in the upper tier of uh, competitive gaming. And this is uh, the desk, right? This is the, oh, famous, the, optic the show. famous optic show, optic podcast uh, desk. We we bought this too. What, where did you get the inspiration for this desk, or was it just something that somebody created for us? And uh, I bought it, and it's uh, it's fire. Like it's it's done so much for. Is it on content. wheels as well? It's on wheels, yeah. It usually, I mean, you, you know where it's at. Oh, yeah, of course, over there. This is a coffee table that I myself made out of uh, regular tables. Uh, that's my camera guy, Matt. Matt, wave. And that is the, the full tour. Small place, right, when you compare it to other esports organizations, but I can guarantee you that there's maybe only two organizations that do more viewership out of their facility than they do out of my facility, yeah. right? We also have something we want to show as well, which people don't really see much. It's the corporate side. So yeah, the corporate side. The yeah. corporate side to your business. So let's quickly check that out because it's kind of it's sure it's such a cool contrast. So this actually used to be like one big open floor. We put up this wall to separate the corporate side, the corporate side of uh, of what we do. Like I say, compared to the hex quarters itself, this yeah. is the. This definitely has more of a corporate feel to it. Yeah, and because it's so corporate, this is what you'll get to see only, just the lobby. One thing here is pretty cool, yeah. if we can show this, is the different companies that are involved. So yep. I don't know if you want to talk through any of them. But Made by Influence, like they made, made our apparel, Guggen Squad, as I just talked about, Good Good Golf. Um, and then Alfredton Town FC, that's our, that's our football club that we invested in. And what do you look for when you're trying to find the, the next company for you to either advise on or invest in? I back the people more than anything else. It's something that someone has always taught me, like uh, every single person that I've ever talked to says, you know, we're investing in Hector, not necessarily Optic. It makes me work harder when I know that I'm working for a team that I'm a part of instead of for someone which would never happen. Hector, you're leaving the sanctuary. I am think? leaving the sanctuary. I'm gonna leave a gift, as I always do when I depart. Yeah, you're gonna leave a gift. Can. Can. I said Enjoy, right here, <laughs> boom. Just in case, I don't know if you smoke, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'm just trying to do me, you know, be a kind human being, share the wealth, all that. Yeah, yeah, modest hex, back at that again. Look, uh, someone's gotta do it. <laughs> all right, let's go. See you later, boys. I guess I just want to reflect a little bit on the last week. Obviously I've known Hector for a long time, over 10 years, um, but it really kind of was weird how when we just started hanging out together, it just seemed pretty normal. Um, and I guess by the end, it was almost like being in an entourage, you know, just hanging around with a group of people, just following Hector around essentially, as he kind of lives this life as this kind of main character. It's kind of bizarre. You know, I think very few people get the freedom that he does. And yeah, it's just kind of crazy to see this kind of world he's manifested for himself where he just travels around the country, he's got his family back home, and ultimately he really just likes Hector, Hector likes Hector. Once you kind of realize that, I think it's a lot easier to get along with Hector. I think, it, you know, people are always so obsessed and, you know, they come and ask questions like, how do I do this, how do I do that? There's no answer. I think it's just, you just have to be yourself, and Hector is being himself, and people want to see that, and he's having a fucking good time, and I've been able to have a good time with him for the last week, because, I mean, who doesn't want to just hang out in Ferraris, smoke weed, travel to nice hotels, hang out at parties? What else is there to do?